Hey everyone, welcome back to the BMW DIY channel. Today I wanted to talk about carbon fiber protection, uh, not just for the i3, but carbon fiber in general. Carbon fiber is a great material, has a lot of positive properties. It's uh, uh, really a uh, strong material and can be much lighter and stronger than steel. The uh, carbon fiber roof in the BMW i3 is actually exposed and clear coated on the vehicle. Carbon fiber is also used in the CFRP material as well, but it's a little more difficult to see or protect it from the sun and the weather. So carbon fiber is usually uh, embedded in a matrix of epoxy resin and then also uh, baked and cured and then uh, typically has a uh, clear coat that's put on top of that in the uh, structure. So that's really what you see when you look at the uh, carbon fiber roof on a BMW i3 or other vehicles where they have carbon fiber components. Uh, for the BMW i3, uh, the literature I can come across says that it is actually baked at around 248 degrees for several hours. So I did some research and I came across this article by Kumar Singh and Nakamura. And it's very interesting as far as looking. They did some research on actually military applications for carbon fiber and looking at how it degrades from the environment and sun exposure. They also looked at the different types of fiber orientation uh, of the carbon fiber in the embedded epoxy matrix, uh, which is kind of interesting because the roof, well, at least on the BMW i3, is the scrap material that's used in, in, the, in the roof. So some excerpts from the uh, article suggest that, uh, of course, the epoxy will break down with the uh, UV that, that can hit it. So the polymer is not very uh, uh, resistive to UV exposure. So by exposing the polymer to UV, you get uh, reduced strength and heat resistance. Or on the other hand, you can also get cross-linking and you can get more brittle. So basically, UV exposure will definitely affect that epoxy matrices. Um, also, uh, you can create other chemical reactive species uh, and color. Dis they saw a discoloration of the uh, carbon fiber as well. Here's some examples of what they saw with degradation with exposure to UV light and uh, later on also with moisture. And the real takeaway here is uh, definitely you want to minimize any UV exposure to uh, carbon fiber matrices. And the combination of uh, moisture exposure with uh, UV tends to even aggravate degradation of the material more. So both of those things can be kind of detrimental. So I got some pictures of uh, roofs that we uh, people have uh, posted with regards to their carbon fiber. And you can see there's some delamination of either the clear coat or the epoxy itself. Um, some of these pictures look like uh, some repair work was done on them. Uh, you can see that, that uh, some edge effects as well. Uh, but clearly that uh, it's not uncommon, even other vehicles, of some discoloration of, and matrix breakdown of the carbon fiber materials or clear coat materials. Uh, there's one uh, review here that said that they actually saw delamination from the edges and from a scratch that uh, was in the center of the panels. I found this from a boat forum and even fiberglass uh, epoxy resins have similar problems with delaminations, uh, especially if there's any cracking and water ingress going on. So it's uh, not a unique problem to carbon fiber, but any of these matrices that are embedded in epoxies have a similar problem. So to see how hot the roof got, I put a uh, temperature probe on the roof and then monitored it. So after 15 minutes sitting in the sun, it's up to about 114 degrees. That's 75 degree ambient temperature. So definitely starts getting hot. So driving around with the temperature is around 75 outside. You can see that uh, if you're driving, it holds it around 10 plus degrees with the airflow over the uh, roof. But as soon as you stop and there's no airflow, it slowly starts to uh, climb in the temperature. Okay, so after about 25 minutes, 77 external temperature, roof is at about 130. So what is that? Uh, 50 degrees higher temperature, uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So 
pretty hot. So I came back with another day. It was about 100 degrees out, and uh, this time I used a regular thermocouple probe. It should be a little more accurate. And uh, it was a slight breeze outside, so that looks like it had a pretty significant impact on the overall roof temperature, even with the outside temperature so high. But that being said, it still got up to about 133 degrees out uh, with the 100 degree ambient temperature. So that's pretty hot, but it's not as hot as like the curing temperature of the plastic itself. So I think that UV may be more of a problem. So the next step was what can I do to protect the carbon fiber and clear coat better? So I went to my garage and found several items that were uh, McGuire's Quick Wax, uh, some Butter Smooth Wax from Amaral and uh, Turtle Wax Carnuba materials. I also went and purchased some high-tech Flex Wax because it says it's UV protecting. Um, graphene Detailer from 303 brand. Um, I happened to pull some sun sunscreen for babies because it, uh, it's pretty good stuff. And uh, just some regular turtle shell hard wax that I then mixed with some nanoparticle zinc oxide to see what would happen as the test. Okay, so <clears throat> this is basically how the test goes. You can check the actual sun values and readings. I point it directly to the sun or close to it. Okay. So here is the uh, modified uh, wax with the uh, ingredients that I included. So I'll take a quick shot of that and the values. Zero. So we'll buff it out in just a second and see what it looks like. Now the uh, membrane itself does block some of the light so we'll just take a quick shot of that. You can see it's about uh, 99 milliwatts per uh, square meter versus about 130 for the uh, straight sun. Then we're getting zero for the membrane. So here's the results, and it really boils down to most, if not all, of the uh, commercial waxes and uh, even the expensive graphene. UV protective waxes uh, are pretty abysmal performance. Uh, 90 plus percent of the UV is actually going through the materials onto your carbon fiber. The only thing that looked good was uh, the baby sunscreen. Uh, the uh, butter wax where I mixed in the uh, nano zinc oxide and also some wax where I mixed in some of the soul safe organic UV protectant materials. In addition, the uh, 3 or 3 graphing detail are like terrible on any kind of a black surface uh, really smeared around. I also looked at the uh, zinc oxide mixed in with the turtle wax material and uh, I didn't really see any scratching on an acrylic plate which is pretty soft material so I think if it's really mixed well so there's no clumping of the zinc oxide that scratching can be controlled and minimized. So based on this, I did some more testing, uh, did some more research and got some additional materials. One of them was the uh, Optimum uh, Car Wax with patented UV protection as a uh, test material. And it looks uh, pretty glossy, shiny on the test stand. I also saw people recommend this the treatment, a heavy duty silicone car wax. So I got that to evaluate as well. And here's what it looks like when it's buffed into a, the uh, membrane for testing. And then I pulled from the uh, rubber uh, evaluation video earlier, I pulled the RV care material because I think it looks like it might be compatible with the clear coat materials, although it's not compatible with the EPDM seal materials for sure, uh, to see how those perform under the similar test conditions. Uh, it also has a pretty glossy coating finish. So. With, with those tested under the same uh, criteria, uh, the optimum UV protecting uh, wax spray was slightly better than the other uh, commercial brands, but not by much. I got about a 80% uh, transmittance to the carbon fiber. 
The treatment was actually better with about 60%, and then the RV carrier was actually way better. Um, what I did then is I put some uh, test samples with the best performing materials on the back of my carbon fiber to take a look and see what uh, they do on the surface over a period of time. So that test is still ongoing and uh, we'll see how that works out in the next several months and uh, whether there's any negative side effects on the materials. So in conclusion, I would say that carbon fiber discoloration is a common issue, not just to the I3s, but uh, many carbon fiber accessory materials. Uh, it looks like damage from the heat uh, is less likely and uh, damage from UV the exposure of the epoxy matrix or the clear coat is probably more likely. Most clear coats uh, do block some of the UV, but not necessarily all of it. So the failure modes appear to be both combination of UV exposure and water exposure, which then would gets underneath of the uh, clear coat and then starts to delaminate the, the material. So anything that would seal or coat the surface to better protect it from any kind of moisture ingress uh, definitely is a good idea. So waxing is definitely better than uh, not doing anything at all, even if it doesn't block UV. So clearly any material that would block UV plus what give water protection is what would, be, what would be optimal. Of course, the best thing to do is park in the shade so you don't expose the material to any harsh environments that could potentially cause a problem. Um, finally, I just wanted to mention to, you know, if I come up with something that looks good, uh, let me know if you guys were interested in uh, purchasing something like that. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you found it interesting, and uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this or see the test results later on. Thanks again for watching.